My name is Jimmy Love, and this is Living Life Quantum. Today, we're going to talk about NBA Big Threes. Hey, folks, thanks for tuning in. Hey, why don't you give us a like or a subscribe? Share it if you like it. Help us build our channel so we can continue to improve on our great content. Share, like, or When I talk about big threes in basketball, especially, you think about these guys. Or these guys. Or these guys. Definitely these guys. But one big three you rarely think about is the 2000 NBA Championship Lakers that just happened to boast two of my favorites. Shaquille O'Neal, the most devastating big man of all time, and the Black Mamba, Kobe Bryant. May he rest in heaven. Two of the best to ever do it. But we can't forget about that third wheel, without whom I don't believe they would have won the championship. His name is Glenn Rice, the Michigan Bomber, number 41. And you know what? It's amazing to me that people normally just attribute that championship to Kobe and Shaq, of which they are well deserving. But I contend that had there been no Glenn Rice, there may not have been a championship. And who is this Glenn Rice? Dude was hustle, he was muscle, grit. He did the dirty work out there on the floor. Big shot taker, big shot maker. And I give it to you that Shaq and Kobe might have been the most important. And they definitely deserve the lion's share of the praise. However, there's some other people, those background singers. The one standing behind Michael Jackson, making him sound even better. These are the guys you normally don't hear. So now we're going to give a voice to one of those unsung heroes. Glenn Rice. 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 Glenn Rice played college basketball for the University of Michigan Wolverines for four seasons, and he was a starter for three of those seasons. He also became Michigan's all-time leading scorer with 2,442 points. He also led Michigan to the 1989 NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Championship, scoring an unprecedented 184 points in tournament play, and that record still stands today. He was also named the tournament's most outstanding player for averaging 25.6 points for the season while shooting 58% from the floor and 52% from three-point range. And after that win, he was also drafted number four overall by the Miami Heat, an expansion team in his second year who needed offense. He joined players like Sherman Douglas and Ronnie Sykley, and despite being a rookie, was called upon to be their scorer. After averaging 13.6 points in his rookie season, he upped his game to 22.3 points a game with 155 three-point field goals, helping to lead the Heat to its first playoff series, where they were swept by Michael Jordan and Chicago Bulls. During his tenure with the Miami Heat, he kept working on his craft, improving his long-range sniping. Although in the 1994-95 season he wasn't chosen for the All-Star team, he participated in the NBA All-Star Long Distance Shootout and won it, edging out sharpshooter Reggie Miller. Imagine that. He proved his shooting prowess even further, where in a game against Shaquille O'Neal and the Orlando Magic, he scored a career-high 56 points on 20 of 27 shooting from the floor, including seven three-pointers. So after playing with the Charlotte Hornets, he wound up with my boys, the Los Angeles Lakers, where his presence helped to form one of the first big threes of the modern era, where he was the third scorer behind Shaq and Kobe. Even the legend Jerry West knew that the combination of these three would bring Los Angeles another NBA championship. He was wrong for that year. Enter Phil Jackson, who knows talent and knows how to get the good out of talent. So alongside A.C. Green, Ron Harper, Brian Shaw, John Sally, some of his former teammates, the Lakers won 67 games for first place in the Western Conference, as Rice averaged 15.9 points a game with 84 three-point shots even ahead of Kobe on the Lakers. Also aided by his performance of 12.4 points a game in the 2000 playoffs, 
the Lakers defeated the Sacramento Kings, Phoenix Suns, and the Portland Trail Blazers in the first three rounds of the playoffs on the way to advancing to the 2000 Finals to play the Indiana Pacers. It was in the second game of this series that Kobe hurt his ankle and Rice had to step it up, scoring 21 points to help the Lakers take that 2-0 lead in the series. And one would have to think, had they not won that game, would they have won the entire series? That's a question for another time. Shaq always called Glenn Rice the pure shooter and thought he was the pure shooter that they needed to continue to win championships. But the beat goes on where he was traded to the New York Knicks, where he continued to shoot lights out, also with the Houston Rockets and the Los Angeles Clippers, and then to retirement as a result of a knee injury, partially torn tendon, finally did my brother in. And to be top 50 in scoring in NBA history with 18,000 career points when you retire is not the worst legacy to leave. He's a champion. He's a humanitarian, he's a businessman, an all-around good guy. I like talking to him. He's Glenn Rice, one of the best all-around basketball players the NBA has ever had. I'm Jimmy Love, and this is Living Life Quantum.